And we're back with more of the Pope on film. It's time, Bunny! It's time! Oh, God, it's time. Yes, Bunny, my friend, my brother, my some third thing. It is time once again for all of us here at the Pope on Film Podcast to shimmy, shimmy, ya, shimmy, ya, shimmy, yay our way into the second half of our big shoe. And it is said second half wherein we finally in eventually get around to discussing our organic, our all natural, fortified with essential nutrients movie. Oh, week. And this week, we finally finish our summer of COVID exploitation with a look at one of the worst looking movies we have ever discussed the 2021 horror movie with finger quotes Virus Shark. Yes. Da, da, da. Virus Shark. Now, look at the screen. This is a visual thing, which is, it will really. Br- uh, cheer up those people on SoundCloud uh, listening to this, but you see that shark in between our boxes, Bunny? You're not going to believe this. That's not actually a real shark. I... I... Shocked. No, I right? am shocked. Shocked. Okay, so quick explanation of our summers. We do themed summers here at the Pope on Film Podcast. And every summer we we just we just latch on to a different theme and sometimes it's fun. Um we did the summer of Star Wars where we watched all of these cinematically released Star Wars films but not the Clone Wars animated movie because it doesn't fucking count. No. Uh and that was surprisingly not as fun as I had expected it to be, but that's fine. And then we did the summer of Saw, which I at least had fun with. I don't know about Bunny, but that was fun for me. Yeah, summer of Saw was fun. Yeah, and then we did, and then we did the summer of oh, Fred Willard died. That was a blast. Fred Willard did mm-hmm. a million movies, and they are so. Each one is very different. So thank then, you, Fred. Couldn't have done it without you. Yeah, thank you, Tim Curry. You're still alive, and I'm very disappointed in you. <laughs> How dare you? And then, uh, last year was our summer of bottoming. Good joke. Where we watched movies from the IMDb Bottom 100, and that's when we learned that the more we talk about the Turkish Recep Evadik series of movies, the more popular we are in Turkey. Yes, this oh. is true. I can't wait for Recep Evadik 35. Recep Evadik goes bananas again. Part six, the return. Even Revadikier. <laughs> yeah. The Revadikiest film in the franchise. So this summer we've been doing COVID exploitation films, verbal copyright 2022, the Pope on Film podcast, and the Church of Ed Wood. It's a term I came up with to explain those movies that were quickly, cheaply rushed out specifically to cash in on the pandemic. Uh, Apropos of nothing, right before we got on the air, I personally tweeted Andrew Lawrence, the director, begging him, please tell me. You are working on Money Plane 2. Because when I think of the lockdown, one of the first things that comes to mind is Darius Emanuel Grinch, a.k.a. The Rumble. Yes. I haven't heard back from Andrew Lawrence, the brother of Joey Lawrence, but hopefully soon they'll be making Money Plane 2. I just hope. I hope. I it it Edge is it, the wrestler Edge is back and he's like a major name in the WWE but I just keep hoping that he gets injured because oh man <laughs> that means he could be off <laughs> oh. money play too the return of the money <clears throat> really hoping 
Okay, so... Now, so, of course, not a serious injury, okay? You know, yeah. we don't want you to get really hurt. Just injured enough to make a cheap movie. So, like, what, a week? Yeah, yeah something like that. So, okay, before we dive deep into Virus Shark, uh, I, I think this is a wonderfully shitty film. I, it's difficult because I looked up a lot of reviews for this movie, and the reviews always say the same thing. When you watch a film like Virus Shark, don't go expecting a wonderful film. And it's like, I, I have a hard time with that. I have a hard time with any film that you have to not be expecting a good film when you watch the film. You know? Okay. But before we dive deep into Virus Shark, I want to talk about the TV show Community. Okay. I swear to you this is related to this week's movie, Virus Shark. But um, the first five seasons of Community aired on NBC. And then NBC canceled them. And there was a small window of opportunity where all of the cast members were still under contract where, hey, in the next year or so, if we get picked up by another studio, we're still contracted to make this. If uh, this date passes and the show hasn't been picked up by any studio, then we're free to do whatever we want. But there was still a chance. And sure enough, right at the last second, Community was saved by Yahoo! Yes. Yahoo had a streaming service and they had um, other space, which was actually really, really good, but that's beside the point. And the sixth season of Community, and it was different and it was weird. There was one specific episode that I absolutely love and that I think of a lot, and it's an episode where Chang leaves the group and goes to Hollywood and he auditions for a commercial and he gets the com he gets the commercial and it's a commercial for like the American Ham Association and his line is Ham girl and it becomes viral and it becomes a big hit and everybody loves the way he says ham girl so he becomes kind of a like a minor celebrity, like a where's the beef? Yes. Clara Peller. Is that her name? How it do seems... I know that? Sounds familiar. How do I know off the top of my head the name of the old <clears throat> lady who... How the fuck is that still in my head? Okay, whatever. Uh, <laughs> but, it's so... It's, it's the fucking Slinky song. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, weird. this is why we don't know how to do calculus. Yeah, yeah. We don't know calculus, but I could easily talk for 20 minutes about the two different Darrens in Bewitched. Yes, exactly. Fucking weird. Fucking weird. <clears throat> like, I couldn't tell you what I ate yesterday, but I have a deep, deep knowledge of the entirety of the series Night Court. Under well, uh, Night Court. I understand. Fucking weird. Okay, so Chang becomes a minor celebrity, and the people at Greendale Community College learned that Abed was m going to make a movie with Chang and has like a small amount of footage of Chang, like a minute of Chang on film. And so in order to capitalize on Chang's popularity, they turn that one minute of film into a hour and a half ad lib sci-fi film. <laughs> Called like Chief Star and the Adventures of Yeah, I don't remember the rest, but they ad lib this sci fi movie at the college, at the empty college, with a bunch of really bad green screens and horrible acting. And I'm like, oh man, this movie is horrible. This movie is horrible. I swear to God, that's Virus Shark. Yes. 
when I first saw this film, I'm like, this looks weird. This looks weird. Oh my god, did Greendale make this? <laughs> I swear, Virus Shark is a specific episode of the sixth season of Community. It, 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 and also to tie in Virus Shark with our summer of COVID exploitation, I half expected um the the setting of this film looked familiar. I was expecting a bunch of uh homeless COVID-19 sufferers to be uh executed by Kevin Nash at any second behind these yeah. people. You know, it, Mal, are you looking up what the name of the movie is from that episode of Community? Chief Star and the Raiders of the Galaxy. Chief Star and the Raiders of the Galaxy. Thank you, Mal, coming in with the clutch. Very all right. good. Okay, so virus. Well, shark. Okay, okay. All of the sets in this movie is wherever the particular actor worked. That's why they are all doing their dialogue alone. Because mm -hmm. it would be like, okay, look, I can sneak you, the camera guy, and the sound guy in, but that's it. And you got to yeah. be out in an hour. Yeah. Or the boss will be back. Fucking Clerks 3 is out. I have heard this. And I'm sure if I sat down and watched it, I'd probably like it, but... It's only playing at a theater like 70 minutes away, and I'm not at a point in my life in the year of our Lord 2022 to drive 70 miles away to watch Clerks 3. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. not who I am right now. Uh, so, yeah. Virus I mean, Shark... Kevin, Kevin Smith, I mean, he's become more of a novelty now. You know? Like, yeah. his movies always used to be really pretty interesting. And now it's just like... Kevin Smith I, is... Like, you gotta collect the whole set, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Kevin Smith... I feel that you would appreciate this, Bunny. Kevin Smith is the C.W. McCall of movies. Okay. You you were really big at one point in time a while ago. Yeah. And if I told you, hey, did you know C.W. McCall is still releasing CB radio related music? You'd go, huh, that's weird. Okay, then. It's kind of the same thing. Hey, Clerks 3. Huh. Okay. Yeah, it's just I, it, it's just a shame because like I I just relate to Kevin Smith a lot, you know, mm -hmm. like just listening to his podcast and shit. If you take a compass and you stick the point in Manhattan, okay, and then you draw a circle around it. I'm on Long Island, Kevin Smith's in New Jersey, but we're still in that same circle. We're still in the same sphere of fucking influence of the city. And we're all kind of the same. <laughs> you know? Yeah, and, and sort of related to that, to piggyback on what you said, it's kind of like, if you get caught between the moon and New York City, I know it's crazy, yeah. but it's true. Yeah. If you get caught between the moon and New York City, the best thing you can do is fall in love. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Arthur, he does as he pleases. So this is a 2021 film. And whatever happened to Christopher Cross? Sailing. Oh, yeah, I love Christopher he Cross. He was huge at that one second in time. Mm -hmm. Where that movie came out, was he taken by aliens? Was he in a car wreck that we never heard about? It, 
he's definitely not one of those people who whose entire career is just playing casinos on reservations because i would have seen him by now <laughs> i got i'm living i live in oklahoma i got casinos up the ass <laughs> at any if, living in oklahoma on any given weekend you could probably go to a casino and see a boz skaggs concert yes that's what it's like living in there's there's a great white in queen's right <laughs> concert next week oh wow yeah wow silent lucidity <laughs> I yeah this con this this podcast is kind of once bitten twice shy. Yeah. So virus Jackson, shark is Jackson Brown will be through soon. <laughs> Jackson Brown. Virus Shark is a 2021 film directed by a guy named Mark Polonia who also plays the coroner in this film. Holy shit, move over Hitchcock. Fun fact, funny, did you know that that's not Alfred Hitchcock, that's not his real name. No. His real name is Alfred Hitchhike Penis. Ah. But he changed it for Hollywood. Uh. Mark Polonia is a lot like Wes Anderson. I said this before the break. Mark Polonia is a lot like Wes Anderson if Wes Anderson was broke and worked at a long John Silver. He is responsible, not just for Virus Shark, he is also responsible for a number, a walloping shit ton of low-budget modern-day grindhouse movies. So, it's game time, Bunny! Okay. I am going to name seven movies. Seven movie titles. And you, Bunny, tell me which movie title I made up. Are you ready? Okay. Okay. I got seven <clears throat> titles. You tell me which one I made up. Are are we clear about the rules? We are clear about the rules. Okay. Zilla Foot. It's it's a Godzilla Bigfoot movie. Zilla Foot. I'm gonna say you Noah's... made that one up. Uh, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna I'm oh. gonna say them all. <laughs> Short explanation, and you tell me what you think. Zilla Foot. <clears throat> it's a Godzilla Bigfoot movie. Okay. Noah's Shark. That one's clever. Noah's Shark. <laughs> stay out. <laughs> As opposed to get out. This one's Stay Out. <laughs> okay. Sharkenstein. It's a Frankenstein shark. I'm not sure if the title made that clear. <laughs> okay. Invasion of the Empire of the Apes. That one's pretty self-explanatory. House Squatch. That's a that's a that's a a Bigfoot that that only is inside houses as opposed to the woods. It's a house squatch. Okay. And Amneville in space. In space. So those are the seven movie titles. Zilla Foot, Noah's Shark, Stay Out, Sharkenstein, Invasion of the Empire of the Apes, House Squatch, and Amityville in space. You got to say it like the ghoul goes west. Yes. Now, Bunny, uh, which movie title did I make up? <sighs> this is a hard one. This is the magic of Mark Polonia. All right, run me through the titles again. Zilla Foot. Okay. Noah's Shark. Stay Out. Sharkenstein. Invasion of the Empire of the Apes. House Squatch. And Amityville. In Space. <clears throat> you got to say it like the ghoul goes west. Stay Out. And Invasion of the Apes. That is your final answer? I think so. Okay. Well, buddy, 
It was a trick question. They're all fucking real. Oh. Those are all movies that have been made by Mark Polonia. I would say that he is the uh, the Roger Corman of bad movies, but Roger Corman was the Roger Corman of bad movies. So do do any of them get any? Ba- See, that's the thing. Like, like that's why I think like. All right, we have different opinions. I don't like this movie. Okay, I don't like this movie. I don't think it's so good. It's bad. I didn't get any particular. I didn't get any particularly good laughs out of it, unless it was making fun of Sammy Hagar, mm. uh, Duke Lawson. Yeah, um, but it kind of felt like they tried. You know, mm-hmm. it kind of felt like they tried. The script was more. Than we had seen in most anything all fucking summer. Yeah, like it that still one movie, wasn't good. Like that one movie that took place inside of a freaking elevator. Yeah, so like I said, uh, I, like if I want I want to give it a pity watch. Like you should give it a pity watch. You're not gonna have a good time, but. It but, at least deserves that. But after all those fucking movies, Jesus Christ. Yeah, I will say this. We've spent an entire summer watching COVID exploitation films. And as much as you say that this movie is a pity watch, if I have to watch Virus Shark or Songbird again, I'm watching fucking Virus Shark. I, I, I'm going to agree on that. If I have to watch um, Virus Shark or COVID-19 Invasion starring a cameo from big daddy sexy diesel kevin nash i'm gonna watch fucking covid killer or virus shark i'm watching virus shark yeah but i don't think that any of mark polonia's films get as good as this although um um all of the ones that i said zillafoot noah shark stay out sharkenstein invasion of the empire of the apes house squatch amityville in space those are all real movies that have either been released or are about to be released by Mark Polonia. Other titles include, because he has made a shit ton of movies. Other titles include Dune World. Okay. Gee, you're not going to believe this, Bunny. It's about a, a planet in space where there's a lot of sand and there are these worms. Yeah. But it's not based on anything else. This is original. It's Dune World. And and has and has asylum called him yet? That's the thing is that you think of like full moon features like asylum pictures and like all of those mockbusters. You think of those people, but it's like Mark Polonia is if uh, asylum films was just one fucking dude. Yeah. <laughs> this isn't a studio. It's this guy. Yeah. And at some point, you gotta go like fucking hats off to you, Jurassic Shark Two, Aquapocalypse, yeah, Frozen Sasquatch, Land Shark, Halloween Night. That name pisses me off. It's all one word, Halloween Night. That pisses me off. And the most anticipated film of 2022, Mark Polonia made. Sharkula. Yeah. It's about a shark who's a vampire. I actually have it on my computer and I haven't watched it yet. But, um... And I would bet you right now that if you watch it, it's gonna be this shark with pointy teeth. See... Hold on, hold on, hold on. If you guys do this next summer, you have to it's a blind uh, bingo. Okay, hold on, hold on, because I haven't gotten there yet. I'm gonna get there right now. Bunny. Yes. So I was thinking about um Mark Polonia and his movies. With all of these titles at hand, I think it would be safe to state that when it comes to the films of Mark Polonia, that he wrote the titles first and the actual script and thought was an afterthought, right? Well, I also think it's whatever he has laying around 
yes, from whatever like, previous movie that he made. So, like, yeah. why make the end, one shark movie when you can make three of them? Yeah. So You've I got was thinking, all the I shit. Was, I was thinking about that exact same thing because at the end of Virus Shark, oh, you see whatever the Ravagers or whatever. Yeah. And those are the people who have gone mad and are eating blood and they got the the Chavez one. And you couldn't Water. take too close a look at the actual costumes. Yeah. I swear, I swear to you, if we had more of a knowledge of Mark Polonia, we could easily pinpoint what previous film he's made that had aliens or where those costumes came from. Yes. Oh God, yes. So I was thinking about that, Bunny, because we do... why so many why so many Sasquatch movies? Yeah. He laid so out I... money for a squash Sasquatch movie and he's gonna keep reusing that shit. Yeah. So I was thinking, Bunny, you don't have to say yes. You don't have to say no. But I'm just gonna throw this out there into the ether. Okay. A Mark Polonia summer. Amityville in space. Sharkula. The Duke Larson series, which we'll get to. Oh no, uh, I don't I I don't I don't know. You're gonna you're gonna have to wait for a good few months to get this okay. bad taste out of my mouth first. Okay, well and I hold am on, getting you back. We we really need to define the words few months because he did a movie called Hell on the Shelf and it's about a murderous elf on the shelf. Okay. We need to do that. We may need to do that for Christmas, yes. Shark Encounters of the Third Kind, Razor Teeth. What I'm saying is we've been putting off the Fast and Furious summer. Yes. I really don't want to watch all the Fast and the Furious movies. And also, there on a is a Hellraiser series waiting. There is a Children of the Corn series waiting. Oh, no. We don't have Fuck to go galloping off to no Fast and the fucking Furious. Fuck no. Fuck those Children of the Corn movies. They're not scary. They're not good. They're not bad. They're fucking paint drying the movie. <laughs> all of those. There's like 30 of those, and none of them are good. Fuck those movies. <laughs> Every October, like Mal and Amber and Emerald are like, oh, it's the spooky month. I'm going to watch some horror movies. And I'm like, okay, come to me. Come to me. Ask me for help. I will get horror movies for you, and you can watch them. And they're like, no, we're going to watch our own movies. Let's see what's on Hulu. Oh, look. Children of the Corn. I'll watch this. No! You made a rookie mistake! <laughs> Fuck that movie. Come on! I've got the skills to pay the bills. If snail pay bills. Um, and also, on a personal note regarding the Fast and Furious Summer, I was recently forced to watch a few of those Fast and the Furious movies this year, and the less <coughs> I say about that, the better. So I'm trying to avoid the Fast and the Furious summer. I'm just saying that I have become a huge fan of the the films of Mark Polonia. His movies have a brilliant aesthetic that I would call no-budget 1987 porn movie. That is the aesthetic that I would give the movies of Mark Polonia. Okay. And I also mentioned porn at this point because, uh, no offense to Mark Polonia, I <sighs> dare say uh, most porn actors could act better than everyone that's in Virus Shark. Oh my god. That no. like, I'm missing Damn it, warning. I'm missing the uh, acting skills of Nina Hartley. You used to call me that when you seduced me. And John Holmes. This cast makes Mia Khalifa look like Sir John Gielgud. Yeah. Um, 
So the movie is about the Shaved virus, or as I called it, the Abed virus. It turns everyone into pop culture quoting community college students with Asperger's. Troy and Abed are a virus! Short aside, Bunny, if I made a cheap movie like this, I would go to Letterboxd, pull a quote from a random review from some Letterboxd poster, and put that on the box art, put it on the poster. This movie has one Letterboxd review that simply says, it kind of slaps no cap. Put that shit above the title on your poster, Mark Polonia. <laughs> it kind of slaps no cap. Boom. That's your pull quote. Bunny, before we uh, get cut off by Zoom, I, I have a programming note. Okay. This is our last episode of The Pope on Film because from here on out, we are a Ken Van Sant fan podcast. Ken Van Sant, of course, plays hard-nosed head of security Duke Larson in this week's movie, Virus Shark. Yes. This is a Duke Larson podcast. Now, all Duke Larson, all the time, hands down, the only good part of this movie, and it's not that good. He, two... he is he... what you get when you boil down masculine toxicity into its essence and pour it onto a clay golem. Oh. This is yeah. who this is. Oh, that is who that is? Okay. Okay. Yes. Well, let me take a crack at it, Bunny. Um, Duke Larson is like if Kingsley the Lion was a proud boy. I, I wrote that on Twitter. Yes. I've got a few others. Duke Larson is if Daniel Tiger took part in January 6th. <laughs> I've got one more. Uh, Duke Larson is like if the Cowardly Lion got super into QAnon. <laughs> Just kidding. I have a shit ton more. Duke Larson looks like Hulk Hogan had a baby with Ric Flair. Close. I was going Hulk Hogan with Marjo Gortner. Nice. Duke Larson is like if Lucha Underground's Johnny Mundo fucked a Muppet. <laughs> Duke Larson looks like Florida smells. <laughs> Duke Larson looks like a Hanna-Barbera character is going to a Halloween party as the Tiger King. <laughs> Duke Larson, the official mascot of sexual harassment. And when I wrote that one, when I wrote that one, that's when it hit me. This entire movie looks exactly like a training video they make you watch at work. Yeah. Now let's see what not to do. Hey, bitch. What if you let me watch a shower? Uh, Duke Larson is what happens if you try to buy Rambo on Wish.com. <laughs> Duke Larson is Captain Kangaroo had just joined a Guns N' Roses cover band. Oh. Duke Larson looks like he just got fired from his job as a manager with the gorgeous ladies of wrestling. Hello, class. I'm your substitute teacher, Mr. Lawson. Look, I'm a bit hungover, so we're going to watch a video, and then when that's done, we're going to be really quiet and not make any noise. Duke Larson, professional stepfather. Yes. So um, the two good things about this movie are, number one, Duke Larson, and also the fact that once the opening credits are done, there's only 69 minutes left. And that's a positive. Yes, it is. Bunny, um, here's the best part, okay? Actor Ken Van Sant plays the same character in multiple films! Okay! Duke Larson is in Virus Shark, Sharkenstein, and Bigfoot vs. Zombies, and he plays a character just named Duke, might be the same person, in Splatter Beach and Monster Movie, and 
in the upcoming 2023 film R.I.P. Van Winkle Part 3. He plays a character named Chief Duke Law. So move the fuck over, Paul Marco. Kelton the Cop is so 1950s. Now it's the Duke Larson saga. Yes. And see, if we did a summer of Mark Polonia movies, we would know more about this. <laughs> the crazy thing is, is that Duke Larson is pinker. It's only than... September, okay? Duke Larson is pinker than the actual m- musician Pink. Yeah. Duke Larson is pinker than uh, Kirby in Super Smash Bros. Yes. That's how pink this man is. I loved this movie. It's dumb and stupid, but it's like all of the reviews say. When you sit down to watch a movie called Virus Shark, you know what you're getting. You're getting Virus Shark. Yes. Yes, this is true. I think I know what you're talking about. This is true. So that has been our summer of COVID exploitation. It Yeah, we're wrapping up. I've got three minutes and twenty, nineteen seconds, eight, seventeen, fifteen seconds. Okay, quick. To wrap it up. Oh. No, I just need to know what your opinion on 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 on, on death comes to town. Oh. No, um. the Sandman. <laughs> Natasha wants to know your thoughts on the Sandman really quick before uh fucking Zoom Zoom cuts us off. I'm going to say it feels like it's just not translating from comic book to screen very well. Instead of coming off like a a strong, silent character, Dream is coming off with just like no personality whatsoever. Just bland. When I was in, when I was like a freshman in high school, I had such a fucking crush on death. God, yeah. I love death. I had the hots for death. <laughs> she had that. I mean, I don't know. I, I haven't watched it, and I've got a lot of people who are watching it who have some... I haven't really... I don't want to get spoiled for anything if I do plan on watching it. So uh, I haven't really read a whole lot, but there's some mixed reviews out there, but most of the people that I talk to, they, they seem to like it. Nice. Well, like, I made it through all of them except for the bonus episode, so, like, I didn't quit. I mean, it's, it's, I would be really curious to hear what you have to say when you watch it. You know, yeah. I, I felt yeah. it's just, there's something missing there. And it feels okay. like, it feels like it's just not translating from the comic book to the screen very well. Hmm. Okay, well, when I watch it, I'll let you know. Okay, a minute 30. Go. Well, that has been it for our summer of COVID exploitation. Honey, make sure that Mal comes over here. Uh, it's been a whole bunch of not fun, but uh, thanks for watching. Now that we are done with our themed summer, it's time for the month of Buntober because it's Bunny's birthday coming up, and for the next six or seven episodes, Bunny is in charge. Bunny's picking the movies. Bunny's deciding what we talk about. And it's always a fun adventure because we never know what weird roads Bunny is going to take us. Bunny, do you have a movie for next episode? Yes. Yeah, see, I thought I was only getting two weeks going bi-weekly like this. So that doesn't give you give enough room to really plan something like I usually do. But I yeah. do have something, and I'm still yeah. going to go for it. Because after okay. this summer, you fucking deserve it. Okay. The original Crimes of the Future and followed the next week by the remake of, or whatever the fuck it is. I've got that. Of on, Crimes I've, of the Future. I've got the new Crimes of the Future on the hard drive. Okay, well, that's going to be fun. Cool. Okay. Well, um, so next, next episode is going to be fun. We're watching the original. 